For a long time, planetary scientists have been puzzling over where Earth's oceans came from. Where the Earth formed early in our solar system, models kind of suggest that it was a really hot place near the Sun, and so all the water that was in that part of our solar system at that point was vaporized into a gas and blown out into the outer solar system. So Earth should have accreted, or formed, from a lot of very, very dry material. And so we should be looking at a very, very dry planet. So the kind of question is, okay, well, if it couldn't have come from where we formed, where else could it have come from? We've kind of settled in many ways on a group of asteroids called the C-type asteroids, which are these sort of water-rich uh, primitive bodies uh, in our asteroid belt. However, we kind of have samples of those C-type asteroids on Earth in the form of carbonaceous chondrite meteorites. And when we measure the water content of those meteorites, it's close but not an exact match of Earth's oceans. And so one of the kind of debates has been, well, we think most of it must come from these C-type asteroids, but potentially there's an other reservoir somewhere in our solar system. And that's kind of where the motivation for this study came from. We were very generously given three particles that were all about the width of a human hair from the Japanese Space Agency. The Japanese Space Agency had retrieved uh, several hundred of similar sized particles from the asteroid Itakawa, and we were hoping to explore the surface of these grains and how they'd been affected by a process called space weathering. Some studies had suggested that you could potentially produce water by solar wind irradiation of rocks. The way that works essentially is you fire hydrogen ions or a proton at a rock, uh, it boots out something like iron or magnesium and nicks an oxygen to produce OH, then another hydrogen ion comes in and produces H2O, which we know as water. So what we wanted to do is see if we could detect that water in Itakawa using a brand new tool called atom probe tomography. It literally tears apart a tiny, tiny sample like these tiny grains, one atom at a time, and so we can measure exactly what that atom, or in our case, molecule of water, well, what it is, and also where it was in the sample. What we were basically seeing is molecules of OH and H2O, or water, in the outer 40 to 60 nanometers of these grains was enriched by about an atomic percent which is a huge amount, so basically like 1% of this grain was now water produced by the solar wind. If you took a cubic meter of soil from Itakawa and melted it, you would extract 20 liters of water from the solar wind alone. And that brings us all the way back to our early solar system when you're throwing carbonaceous asteroids at our young forming Earth, in and amongst that it's an incredibly dusty place. There is lots of fine grained dust flying around, there is a very energetic young, young sun firing all sorts of solar wind uh, radiation at these grains and they would be rich in water too and they're going to fall onto the earth. Uh, the isotopic composition, that's the compositional fingerprint of the solar wind is incredibly isotopically light whereas the C-type asteroids were slightly isotopically heavier in terms of their water content and so if you bring those two together you could potentially explain Earth's oceans by accreting some fine grain material alongside these carbonaceous asteroids. And so we potentially now have a complete model or complete explanation of the, uh, the delivery of Earth's oceans. It might not be something that happened on Earth, but it could be something that would produce water-rich worlds close to their stars elsewhere in the galaxy. We're trying to send folks out into the solar system to like the Lunar Gateway Project to put people on the moon in a sort of like permanent habitation system. And one of the key things is finding fresh water for them to drink and also convert into rocket fuel. Um, and potentially you could therefore melt the lunar soil and produce, uh, get, extract this water that's produced by the solar wind as a renewable resource. And that would be true for any world that doesn't have an atmosphere in our solar system. So there's potentially a lot of water out there uh, that's easily extractable.